Hi all and welcome back to the channel for a bank holiday special today which is nothing to do with my usual content but it is the restoration and repair of this marquetry picture. Bit of background behind the picture, it's over 40 years old, it was made by my father in around about 1977 when I was three years old. So a marquetry picture is a collection of different fine grain woods um, and different shades of wood to make up a picture like a scene like this. The finish is not great, there's lots of cracking. So over time it's become very yellowed. So my idea is I'm gonna flat it back down with sandpaper um, to make the grain pop back out again and get some separation of the colors. I'm gonna give it a good clean. I'm gonna put a new frame on it. I'm gonna varnish it all up. So let's get on with it. Working with my orbital sander and 400 grit paper, I gently remove the old varnish. I'm trying to be as careful as possible not to take too much of the wood away, but some loss in thickness is inevitable. The grains beneath are absolutely fantastic after 40 years of hiding. Here's a good example of the sanded first half of the picture with sharp grains compared to the dull and yellowed unsanded side. I have sanded the small bridge area also to highlight the contrast. Working on the second half of the picture, I hit a couple of snags which I will show you in a minute. Firstly, I need to remove as much of the dust and debris from the picture using a vacuum and then give it a deep clean using white spirit and a clean rag. Stage one of the rub down is complete and you can really see the grain and the differences between the grain popping out now. However, the rub down process has highlighted a few problems. I think the orbital sander was a bit aggressive so I've got a bit of damage here where I've lost the corner of this mountain. This patch of water seems to have worn away where it's so thin due to the, um, the sandpaper. Slight bit of damage here, which I might leave. There's a chunk of rosewood missing here, um, which comes into the snow melt, which I'm going to replace that. Uh, there's a slight piece of the mountain missing here, so I might have a look at that. I've also noticed that some of the grain has um, become a little bit loose. The, the varnish is obviously holding that together. So I'm going to leave as much of that as possible, leave it as original as possible and just fix the holes where I can um, by backfilling with some bits of marketry I've got left over from the box of tricks my dad had 40 years ago. So let's get that done. So this piece of ebony under the watermill has obliterated during sanding. So I'm going to trace an outline and use that to cut a new piece to shape. Add some PVA glue to the hole. Press the new piece in place and clamp for an hour or so to keep it flat. I'm going to repeat this process on all the other chips and missing parts. Here is the restored picture with all the replaced wood parts highlighted. Here I've added an entire island as the grain was so thin it had worn through when sanding. Here is the piece of veneer that I demonstrated being replaced in the video. The sky had also cracked and come away from the backboard so I injected some PVA glue underneath the veneer and held down with a clamp until dry. Time for a coat of lacquer and I'm using this clear satin product that goes onto the wood milky but dries clear. It is a great product for showing off the grains in the veneer and really brings the pitch to life after the sanding and repairing is finished. A close up of the trees in the picture along with the water mill and conifers shows what a difference the lacquer makes to the veneer. Time to add the frame and I'm using this 20mm by 20mm L shaped framing with 45 degree mitered corners that is glued into position and tacked with nails to give it some reinforcement. Once finished I will give this a further coat of lacquer to seal the wood. So that's the repair finished and I'm fairly happy with the result. The only thing that really lets it down is this island I've had to create where there was a hole in the grain. The other repairs have gone really well, so I'm pleased with those. I'm going to put up this comparison shot between the before and after, so you can really see the difference in contrast of colours. So I hope I've done my father proud by restoring his picture. Uh, he died in 1988 when I was just 14, so um, he's been gone a long time, so I'm hoping somewhere he's looking down and thinking I've done a good job. If you like what you've seen today with the repair, Please do check out the other content on my channel where I cover such diverse topics as Audi TT repairs and also a coin pusher instructional video on how to build a coin pusher. Thanks once again. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out future content. Thanks for watching.